Y'all remember the Exodus with Moses? How he led the children of Israel from the hand of Pharaoh the Egyptians? Remember that. Above all people. Above all people, meaning all of the nations, kindreds, or races. That's right. Read verse 6 again. For thou, verse 6, for thou art a holy people. The Israelite man and the Israelite woman are a holy people. That's oh, right. Read. Unto the Lord thy God. Read on. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. He chose us. He chose our races. He chose our nationality, brother. Read. To be a special people uh -huh. unto himself. Read. Above all people. Above what? Above all people, all of the races, above all of the nationalities, all people that are upon the face of the earth. So now everybody understands what fear is, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, so it's when you do not fear, uh, trust in God. When you do not trust in God. When you fear what's going on, you're not trusting in the Most High. Alright? This is the book of Romans chapter 16 verse 1. I command unto you, Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Sincrea, that ye receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. For she hath been a succourer of many, <coughs> and of myself also. Right, because she had been a help. She was a help unto Paul and to many others. She was somebody that they could trust in. She provided help for those individuals. So that's what a secure is. That's your help. Alright? So, let's go to 2 Timothy 1 and 7 from there. Let's see. Where does fear come from? Does it come from the Mosai? Where does it come from? The world. The world? Yeah, your heart, your mind. Okay. Stand up, brothers, when you speak. The flesh. The flesh. Lack of trust. Lack of trust. Good. All right. Second Timothy one and seven. It's the book of Second Timothy chapter one verse seven. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So the Most High God understand whenever you roll it in a fearful spirit, there's only two spirits you can serve on earth. Y'all know that, right? We said a lot of stuff. We said it comes to heart, mind, not trust. See, you serving God. Are you serving Satan? So, coming from that other spirit. Alright, coming from that other spirit. So, let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 48. So, today, our fear today, I'm going to focus on one of our first fears, is of the white man. That's why when we, that's why when you get a job, you're scared to wear your fringes. That's why you're scared to get caught uh, talking about the truth. You, 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 you fear the white man on every aspect. You're scared to even ask to keep your high holy days. That's that's how wrapped up we is in fear of the white man. Read that. Officer, oh, so before you get yep. to I know you're finna dive into it. Let's go to Hebrews two and eighteen real quick. Um just to go along with the precept in um was that Romans sixteen. This is an example, so make sure y'all precept is showing that there's there's a shadow of a doubt who our help is. Uh was that Hebrews two and eighteen. Hebrews chapter two and verse eighteen. Uh-huh. For in that he himself had suffered being tempted. Who's this talking about, brothers? That's Jesus the Christ, all right? He himself, he suffered the same things that we suffered. Read on. For in, in that he himself had suffered being tempted. For he is able to secure them that are tempted. So because he's faced the same exact things we face, he in return is what? When we are faced with hardships and trials, those points, he's able to do what? Overcome. He's able to, yeah, go ahead. Overcome? No. He's able to what? You look like you got it, brother. Uh, he's able to secure us when we feel. Okay. Exactly. He's able to help us. He's able He's able to pick us up. Why? Because he's been through the same thing. Just like it says in uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there's been, there's been nothing in these scriptures or in this world that... Christ or the other prophets have not faced, all right? But he's the ultimate one because he did it what? He lived this life blamelessly. So whatever you're going through, what you think you're going through, he can help you out. Deuteronomy 28 and 48. All right, so the first fear we're going to go into is of the other nations, particularly the white man. 
This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, uh -huh. which the Lord shall send against thee, uh -huh. in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So, why did I go there? Because this, this man is responsible for us being destroyed, it's common, or it's uh, normal, that's the word I use, it, it's normal, or expected for us to fear the same man that robbed us, raped us, murdered us, lied to us, uh, put us in literally project housing to see what happens to us. It's normal for us to fear him. But coming to this truth, we got to understand that where did, where did we read fear comes from? Uh, to train, train um, your help. There you go. When you don't believe in the Most High. Alright? And did God give us that spirit? No. no. Alright. So from there, let's go to Genesis chapter 9 and verse 2. Let's see what who initially was given that spirit. Because we know it wasn't given to us. This is the book of Genesis chapter 9 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. And the fear of you. And the what? The fear of you. And the fear of you. Read. And the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the of the earth. And upon every fowl of the air. Upon all that moveth upon the earth. And upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. So, originally, initially, the fear of us was on the other nations. But through sin... Through disobedience, now it has been a complete role reversal. Now when we on the job, every all the Jake, when you chilling, and then white man come around, everybody start working. <laughs> Funniest thing ever. I do it on the job too, myself. Alright? You kicking it? The principal walk through, oh, whoa, 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 hey, hey, hey. Everybody do something. Everybody do something. That's 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 what has happened. But initially we we the other nations were in fear of us from the Most High God, directly from God. Read that again. And the fear of you, uh -huh. and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth. Every beast of the earth. Let's hit that one first. Out of all the human species, all the nations, there's 18 of them, who is the most scared of animals today? Jay, Israel. My wife will look at a frog like it is a doggone Tyrannosaurus Rex. A frog. Snakes. Jake do not play with snakes. It will run as any little, any, the smallest creatures. It's crazy. But God says the fear and dread of you is going to be upon every beast of the earth. But now today you have 300 pound men. Officer David, 6'8". 310, 2% body fat. But when he see an ant, he running out of the room. That's what has happened. Damn, brother. That's what's happened to us. Damn. Hard, All right. <laughs> From there, let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 2 and 25. So understand, that, that spirit that we roll in today was not what was given to us. The other nations were to be in fear of us. Were to be in fear of us. Deuteronomy 2 and 25. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 2, verse 25. This day will I begin to put the dread of thee uh -huh. and the fear of thee Read. upon the nations. Upon who? The nations uh -huh. that are under the whole heaven, who shall hear report of thee and shall tremble and be in anguish because of thee. So initially, the other nations were going to be in fear and dread of us. Fear and dread of us. It says, uh, who, have, who shall hear the report of thee and shall tremble and be in anguish because of thee. What? Let me ask y'all this. Why do we have a good report? Why do we have a good report? Keep it in mind with Wisdom of Solomon 17 and 12. Why do we have a good report? We were uh, connected to the Most High. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. Because we trusted in the Most High, we had that report. And because we had that connection with the Most High, it says that all the other nations were going to fear and dread us. All right? They were going to fear and dread us because of that. Let's go to Deuteronomy 11 in verse 22. 
This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verse 22. Uh -huh. For if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments, which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, mm -hmm. to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him, uh -huh. then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. Uh -huh. Every place upon, I'm sorry, whereon, the soles of your feet shall tread, shall be yours. From the wilderness of Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall your coast be. Uh -huh. There shall no man be able to stand before you. Read. For the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon, as he has said unto you. So. God says all the other nations were going to fear. Wherever you put your feet, he said you were going to conquer those people. That's where we're coming from. That's the mindset we got to have. But that's not how we roll it. Why not? Deuteronomy 28 and 66. Deuteronomy 28 and 66. Going along with what I said about the animals. How we fear the animals. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 66. Uh-huh. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. So now our life is hanging in doubt. Whereas on the flip side, when we we're keeping the commandments, it says wherever we went, fear and dread would come upon the other nations. Wherever we placed our feet, we would take over those nations. Read. And thou shalt fear day and night. And what? Shall fear day and night. Uh huh. And shall have none assurance of thy life. All right. How many of y'all can fi find out how many miles you have on your car the second the police officer jump behind you? You find out what's your hot and cold, find out your speed limit, you find out everything. You look at that odometer so quick when you see a police officer. That's fear. That is fear and dread. The second you, you figure out, there's this seatbelt, where's my license, where's my registration, all that stuff processed so fast because we broke God's commandments. Y'all y'all don't understand. We don't even understand. The white man don't do that. When you ride around, I because I, I work with Edomites. When you ride around, they don't ever be like, they go to police. I ain't never heard it before. They will never do that. But us, we gotta do that all the time, all day long. But why? Why why does that happen? Stand up, stand up, brothers. Because we broke God's law. There you go. There you go. Because we're in the midst of sin, now the flip, the script has flipped. All right, Matthew 8. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 23. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 23. And I'm going to tell you another reason why this has happened. Very, very, uh, it's an attribute that our people lack today. This is the book of Matthew chapter 8 and verse 23. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him, uh -huh. and behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, uh -huh. insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. Read. And his disciples came to him and awoke, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So, what attribute do we miss today, brothers? Faith. We lack faith. The nation of Israel is a very, very faithless nation. Even Christ said himself, he says, well, when the Son of Man returns, will I find faith on the earth? That's what he said. You, you literally have to show, you gotta, if you don't show uh, Israel exactly what's going on, they don't believe it. They will never believe it. That's just how we feel. I can't tell you uh, we gonna do this, this, and this. Y'all be like, mm -hmm. I don't see it. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, I just tell it. That's just how we built. But this is the greatest example. The, the, the disciples were rolling with Christ. Y'all know Jesus Christ, right? Y'all know the y'all know the miracles the disciples saw Christ do. Raise the dead, feed five thousand, walk on water, turn water into wine, so on and so forth. But it was a, it was a, it was a, they at sea, they at sea now, and the, the waters get a little hard, and they're, they're fearful. Fear came upon them. As opposed to, man, you know, you know, Christ, all we gotta do is wake up Christ and we'll be good. 
They didn't do that. Same thing we do. Guess what? Second to end of the month come. Something happening with finances. We don't say, the most I got to feed the birds, the fowls. I'm going to be good. You and your wife going through problems. It ain't, you know what? The most I going to work it out. It ain't that. The child acting crazy, it ain't, okay, the most I doing this for a reason. You lose your job. It ain't all things work together for the good. It's, what am I going to do next? I got to do this. I got to do that. That's not the way we operate. But the scriptures, which we're going to get into, they go against that. They go against that thinking. When you want to take your own plan as opposed to trusting in the most high God. All right, let's go to Judges 1 and 19. Judges 1 and 19. Talking about that lack of faith that we have. Judges chapter 1, verse 19. Uh -huh. And the Lord was with Judah. And he drove out the inhabitants of the mountain, Read. but could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley because they had chariots of iron. So this is during the time of the judges. All right, we were fighting against nations. It says he was able to clear out one enemy in the mountains, but he couldn't clear out another enemy because they had chariots of iron. Now, with those chariots of iron so advanced and so uh, technologically on another level that the Most High God said, you know what? This is on another level. I can't even deal with them chariots. They got iron chariots. I can't do nothing against that. What 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 happened, brother? Somebody break that down for me. Make it plain for me. We went into here and we even questioned God. There you go. When we saw those chariots of iron, no longer did we say, let's call on God, they ran. They got instantly scared. Instantly scared. Same thing happens with us today. Same thing happens with us today. You go to uh, you go to fill out a job application, and you see five other people filling out the same job application. Some some people say, you know, what? I ain't even gonna apply no more. I'm scared. I ain't gonna do it, man. Everybody else doing the same thing. I ain't gonna get the job. Fearful people. Fearful, fearful people. Let me see if these brothers been studying. Officer bring out a good point. Um, how you said it? You said uh, in, in regards to getting a job, right? Who, who controls that, whether you get the job or not? Who's over those people that are able to hire and fire? Who has that scripture? What you got? Did you use Daniel 4 and 17? Right, let's read that real quick. Daniel chapter 4, verse 17. I'll read it. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 4, and verse 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers, and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it the basis of men. Got us. So, exactly. Whoever control, whoever in a position of power, the most high God sent them there. Whether that's on your job, whether that's at school, wherever it is, the most high God set up leadership. That's why he says obey in Romans 13. Obey the powers that be, because he set them up, no matter who it is. All right, let's go to Numbers uh, 14 and 11. Numbers chapter 14 and 11. Let's see what the most high God says about the spirit that we roll in. This is the book of Numbers. Chapter 14 and verse 11. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? Uh -huh. And how long will it be ere they believe me? Uh -huh. For all the signs which I have shown among them. So the Lord said unto Moses, This is what the Most High God said unto Moses. He said, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be Earth, they believe it. So he said, what do I have to do for these people to believe in? Because when you read through the book of Numbers, what do they keep, what do they keep doing to Moses and all the prophets and believers? What do they keep doing? Get some new hands. What you got, brother? They keep uh, like talking crazy against the Most High. There you go. They kept murmuring and complaining against the Most High. Because when you do that, do you really believe? No, that's what the Most High God letting us know. When we complain, when we question God, when we go against God, you really do not believe. 
That's what he's letting us know. But guess, the sad thing about this story, they just got delivered out of Egypt. I don't know what other miracles you can do. To this day, Egypt is still being talked about. On, on From a preschool level to the highest level of education, they still talk about what happened in Egypt. But that's how, that's how faithless our people are. All right? From there, let's go to Isaiah 29 and 13. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29 and verse 13. So now we're going to see what we get the fear that we have today from. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, uh -huh. and with their lips do honor me, uh -huh. but have removed their heart far from me. They have what? Removed their heart far from me. Read. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Our fear today is taught by the precept of men. What men is this making reference to? The so-called white man. The so-called white man. And how did he teach us to fear God? Through slavery. Right? How did, what did he teach us? Uh, told us that God was white, that Jesus was white, the saints was white, and everything was white, 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 white. Right. Through a sword and through a whip. Right. Okay. How did he teach us to love God? What did he teach us? How do we love God? In Christianity, how do they teach you to love God? With your mouth. You sing. That's the number one thing. You sing. What they say? Uh, my, my 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 pastor got a praise on him. Oh shit. <laughs> You sing, you dance, and you give. Mm. That's how you love God in Christianity. Sing, dance, and give. All blind. You celebrate his holidays. That's how you love God. You don't love God if you ain't giving a Christmas present. That's, that's the most holy day of all. Jesus Christ's birthday. You don't believe in that. Officer, they're missing something, though. What's up? How, how did the white man teach them to fear God? I want to hear it. I want to hear something particular. I love everybody. No, that's not what I'm looking for. I want to see if we can get it. Think about the fear. We're supposed to have fear of God. Who, who, how did they teach us to fear God? What you got that fear? They taught, they taught that themselves was God, so our people feared the white man instead of fearing Exactly. There you go. Exactly. There you go. There you go. And that's, that goes into Deuteronomy 2866. That's why you get scared when you see that police car. Because traditionally, what color is that man that's hopping out that car? It's the white man. You fear him. That's why when we tell you, don't shave your beard, you shave it. But when you go to work, the white man say, don't shave your beard. I mean, the white man tell you to shave your beard, you shave it. But God say, don't shave it, and you shave it. You go against whatever, whatever this Bible, you won't do it. The white man tell you to do it, you do it. Got a question? Go ahead. Uh, can we use Colossians 2 and 8? Yep, yep. You can precept it with that. Exactly. Exactly. All right, from there, let's go to uh, 1 John 4 and 18. 1 John 4 and 18. This is why we fear. I mean, this is why we trouble. We battle with fear. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. This is the book of 1 John chapter 4 and verse 18. Mm -hmm. There is no fear. There is what? No fear Read. in love. But perfect love casteth out fear. You see that? Perfect love casteth out fear. What's perfect love, brothers? The commandments. The keeping of the commandments. When you keeping these commandments, you really don't have no fear. You do not have any fear. Because you know, if I know I'm keeping 100% of all the laws, guess what? Every, anything that happens to you, whether in your mind you perceive it as good as bad or bad, who is it coming from? The most high. The most high God. The most, so guess what? If you don't get the job that you, you thought was the best job in the world, who set that up? If your wife, you come into the truth, y'all been married for three years, your wife commit adultery, you might think that's the worst thing in the world. But you was keeping the commandments. Was that a good thing or a bad thing? It was a good thing, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> y'all know it. It's hurting some of y'all. What? That's good? Yes. That could be a good thing if you keep in the commandments. Read that again. 
This is the book of 1 John, chapter 4, verse 18. Uh -huh. There is no fear in love. No fear in love. No fear in love. You don't have any fear when you're keeping the commandments. You disregard what your family say. You disregard what your friends say. You disregard what the job says. Why? Because you know you're walking in righteousness. Read. But perfect love uh -huh. casteth out fear. Read. Because fear hath torment. Uh -huh. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. You see that? He that feareth is not in perfect love. Like we always say. Uh, if a brother is scared that his wife going to look through his phone, why does he have that fear? Because he's in the midst of what? Sin. If a brother is scared to show up to work because he doing what he's supposed to, not necessarily sin, but his life ain't in order. He ain't doing the things that he's supposed to do. Not saying that the job is a uh, uh, sin or death, but you get what I'm saying? You ain't in order. Whenever you're out of order, you have fear. You have fear. Why are you scared to come home late when you're supposed to? It's 1 o'clock and your mom gave you a curfew of 11. Why were you fearful? You was going against the commandment. You was going against the order that was set up. That's the only time you have fear when you out of line, when you out of whack. So that's why it says perfect love casteth out that fear. Because you know you walking in the in the law, statutes, and commandments. Does everybody understand that? Alright? That's why it says the most high God didn't give us that spirit of fear. Because what did the most high God give us? What did he give us? Nobody know? Brother Elijah. He gave us the laws. He gave us the laws. He gave us the laws. He gave us that perfect love. Or that path to perfect love. Alright? From there, let's go to Psalms 83. Psalms chapter 83 and verse 1. This is the book of Psalms chapter 83 and verse 1. Keep not thou silence, O God. Uh -huh. Hold not thy peace, uh -huh. and be not still, O God. Read. For lo, thine enemies make it to mold. Thine what? Enemies make it to mold. So we know that our enemies are in agreement against us. Read. And they have, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Read. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, uh -huh. and consulted against thy head ones. Read. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. All right, so now I'm going to hit a few main topics that our people fear. All right, the first one I'm going to hit, because this is something that I dealt with, is the fear we're going to go into FEMA teams and martial law, all that stuff, because I know we got a lot of new brothers, new sisters, and y'all watch that stuff. So, and the people online. All right, that's mad that Officer Mathias cut his dress. All right, so we're going to deal with that fear. We're going to deal with that fear of the FEMA camps. Let's go to 1 Ezra 5 and 68. Because this is a big issue. And I, I, I forgot what video uh, somebody posted. And it was going, and it, it, it got the same timeline, like the same themes, all them FEMA camp like videos. And they, they do kind of scary. And I'm like, what the? This stuff, it's still the same stuff from when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. The same stuff. Oh, this happened. They protesting over here. This just went up. That just, it's the same stuff. And they never, like Deacon Ithan say, they never give a solution. Mm -hmm. They never tell you what to do to avoid it or how to get over it. They just show you all this stuff. First Ezra 5, 68. Uh, the book of First Ezra, chapter 5, and verse 68. Uh -huh. So they went to Zerubbabel and Jesus and to the chief of the families and said unto them, We will build together with you, uh -huh. for we likewise as ye as ye do obey your Lord and do sacrifice unto him from the days of Abzerath, the king of the Assyrians, who brought us hither. Uh -huh. Then Zerubbabel and Jesus and the chief of the families of Israel said unto them, It is not for us and you to build together and house unto the Lord our God. Read. We ourselves alone will build unto the Lord of Israel, according as Cyrus the king of the Persians hath commanded us. All right, so the heathens were trying to join together with us to rebuild our temple. All right, Ezra saying he not, he not 
not quite in agreement with that. And then he gives further explanation behind it. Read. Verse... To 71, yep. yet we ourselves alone will build unto the Lord of Israel according to, according as Cyrus the king of the Persians hath commanded us. Uh -huh. But the heathen of the land lying heavy upon the inhabitants of Judea and holding them straight hindered their building. So, because we were building alone, they said that they were going to hinder our building. They were going to hinder our building. Now, how are they going to do that? Read verse 73. Verse 73. And by their secret plots uh -huh. and popular persuasions uh -huh. and commotions. So, one, secret plots. Somebody give me a secret plot. Or what they want to persuade as secret. The prison system, I guess. Also. Right? Prison system. But going into uh, concentration camps and stuff. I give you one. I give you one. Y'all might. I don't know if it's still a yeah. business, but... Rex 84. I remember we used to have, you remember that? I, I had that document right. on that. Yeah, all the red, red mm -hmm. list, blue list. They have all of the Judites that right. live by the highways yep. for a reason. Yep. Yeah, they said they put us next to uh, highways that we get on the trains and they export us out. All this stuff. Why do they do that? For us to live in fear. So guess what? You say, you know what? If I join the Israelites, they're going to put me on the blue list. Yep. And then when, when martial law is declared, I'm going to be taken up out of here. All of that stuff is fear. It's a fear tactic. It's a fear tactic. So you don't do what you're supposed to do. Because when you read the scripture in Matthew 24, it says, two will be grinding in the, uh, in the field. One will be in the field. One will be taken. So what is that? It said it be at the day of Noah. That's what I want. Right, 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 right. It says when Christ returns, it will be like the days of Noah. They'll be given in children. Guess just read. Let's read Matthew chapter 24 and verse 30. And why am I going to go in here to show you that that FEMA camp stuff, the concentration camp stuff, is not happening? Yes, some of us will die. Yes, that's going to happen. But on a mass scale like that, it's not in the scriptures. We don't read it. Read that. Matthew chapter 24, verse 37. Uh-huh. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Uh-huh. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage uh -huh. until the day that Noah entered into the ark. So, is that, is that more on that? And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, uh -huh. the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what your, I'm sorry, what hour your Lord doth come. All right, that's all I wanted. So it's showing you, will things, will everybody be in disarray and not know it? No. It says it's going to be at the days of Noah. The flood came, everybody was going just as normal, flood came, wiped everything out. That's how the same thing is going to be when Christ returns. So does that sound like a FEMA camp and everybody getting gassed up and dying? And that ain't, that ain't sound like a FEMA camp to me. It sounds like martial law to me. So all that stuff is is a play. They playing on your brain to keep you away from keeping God's laws. I got a precept for that. Yep. Uh, Ezekiel, let me find it. What's that? Ezekiel 20. Oh yeah. Hold on. Hold on. It's going to be Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 25. Ezekiel 22 and verse 25. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 25. Uh huh. There is a conspiracy. A what? There is a conspiracy uh -huh. of her prophets in the midst thereof. Because the majority of these conspiracy theories in this uh, truth community is our own people. Yep. Read. Like a roaring lion ravening the prey. Uh huh. They have devoured souls. They have what? They have devoured souls. Because they got you more caught up on FEMA camps and Illuminati more than what? Keeping God's commandments because it's all about scare tactics. So what? All right, there's a conspiracy. Just like Officer said, what's the solution? How do we how do we escape this conspiracy? Well, you can't escape it because it's going to happen. So why am I going to live my whole life in fear, knowing I can't do anything about it? How about we just keep the commandments so when it happens, my spirit will be safe, whether I die or whether I live until Christ comes back. Read that all the way through. There is a conspiracy of a prophet. In the midst thereof, like a roaring lion ravening the prey, they have devoured souls, they have taken the treasure and precious things, they have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Just one more quick precept, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28. Alright, just like the officer said, yes, 
there's going to be some of us who do die, all right? But we're not, we're not worried about that. We're, we're, we're worried about our reward in heaven, all right? Let's read that. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 29, 28. Uh -huh. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, mm -hmm. but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Exactly, because that's the most high God that can do that. The white man, he can't do nothing to your soul. He can only kill your body. All right, he's been doing that for the last 400 years, so it ain't nothing new. We might as well get our spirits right. Yep. All right, build ourselves up so when the Father comes and judges, we be all right. Exactly. Go back to uh, finish that in verse 73, first Ezra. First Ezra chapter 5, verse 73. And by their secret plots and popular persuasions and commotions. And this is, the last, this is the funniest thing about all this. They try to make it seem like it's something hidden, but everybody knows about it. Everybody knows about FEMA camps. Everybody knows about the uh, the, what's the, the black uh, funeral, I mean, the, the cremation things. You remember we used to be like, uh, what did we call them? For Marshall? Oh, oh, the, um, I know what you're talking about. Like the big coffins? Yeah, FEMA the coffins. FEMA yeah, coffins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The FEMA coffins. Yeah. We all know about this stuff. So it's like, it's not even secret. It's a fear tactic. Keep reading. Uh, and by the secret plots and popular persuasions and commotions, they hindered the finishing of the building uh -huh. all the time that King Cyrus lived. And that's what it's all about. Hindering the building. Hindering the building. What's the building today? The building is the body of Christ. We are the building today. Because do we have a literal temple? No. We make up the body of Christ. We are the church. We are the church. All right? So from there, let's go to uh, first, second Ezra, chapter 8, and verse 27. Second Ezra 8 and 27. Dealing with FEMA camps. This is the last one on that. Give some second. second Ezra 8 and 27. All right? Because like I said, our people are very, very fearful. And that's something that a lot, like Officer pointed out, a lot of our brothers and sisters, we into that heavy. We into that more than the white man. Alex Jones is the head, but you look under the, his followers, nothing but Jake. Read that. Second Ezra chapter 8, verse 27. Regard not the wicked inventions. Do what? Regard not the wicked inventions of the heathen. Uh -huh. But the desire of those that keep thy testimonies in affliction. Exactly what we just said. Don't regard the inventions. Worry more about keeping the commandments and what has happened for our forefathers and foremothers that kept the laws of God. That's what we need to be focused on. Alright? From there. Next thing. Financial fears. How many of y'all have financial fears? Dealing with money issues. Alright. I see all your spiritual hands. It's alright. It's alright. I see them. I see him. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 6. Alright. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 6. Because the Most High is in control of each and everything. This is the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 6. Mm -hmm. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. So, First off, understand, the Most High control of life and death. He kills, he makes a lie. Read. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. Read. The Lord maketh poor the and Lord make, does what? maketh poor. Read. And maketh rich. Read. He bringeth low and lifteth up. So the Most High makes us poor or makes us rich. He has that power. Read. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust uh -huh. and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill. Uh-huh. To set them among princes, and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon him. So the most high God is in control of finances as well. Not only is he in control of life and death, not only is he in control of the powers that be, but it says he can raise the poor out of the dunghill as well. He can make the rich poor. He's in control of every aspect of your life. That's what we got to come to realization with. Go to Sirach 11. Sirach chapter 11 and verse 12. We're going to read 12 to 15. This is the book of Sirach chapter 11 and verse 12. Again, there is another that is slow and has need of help, uh -huh. wanting ability and full of poverty. Uh -huh. 
Yet the eye of the Lord looked upon him for good, uh -huh. and set him up for from his low estate. And did what? Set him up from his low estate. So the Most High God can do that. He can do that. Read verse thirteen. And lifted up his head from misery, so that many that saw it marveled at him. Uh huh. Prosperity. Prosperity. And adversity. And adversity. Life. Uh huh. And death. Read poverty. And riches uh -huh. come of the Lord. No, they come from Satan. Of the Lord. The Most High God is in control of all of this. Life, death, prosperity, adversity, poverty, and riches. The Most High God is in control. Jump down to verse 21. Verse 21. Marvel not at the works of sinners, uh -huh. but trust in the Lord, uh -huh. and abide in thy labor. Read. For it is an easy thing in the sight of the Lord on the sudden to make a poor man rich. No, it's an easy thing. It's an easy thing, it says, for the most how to make a poor man rich. Now, does that mean go out today and go play the lotto? Absolutely not. But he can do that. He can do that. He'll make sure you're taken care of. Go to uh, Matthew 6 and verse 25. Matthew 6 and 25. That's the type of confidence and swagger we got to walk when, we, when we're dealing with these other nations and these heathen. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 25. Uh -huh. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, uh -huh. what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Uh -huh. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather it, Gather into barns, uh -huh. yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? So who can explain that? Verse 26. It says, For behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Who can break that down? Uh, basically, the heavenly Father takes care of them. They don't have to worry about where they're going to get their next meal from. Uh, none of that. They just continue to be animals. They do their life. There you go. There you go. You got animals out there that don't store up. They're not like ants. They don't store up and, and, and wait for harvest time. They literally live on what the most I provide for them. Yet, it says, how much more precious are ye? We, the, the most I says, the hairs of our head are numbered. So he gonna take care of his, of his saints. He gonna take care of those who gonna keep the commandments. All right, understand that. Keep reading. Verse 27. Verse 27. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto a statue? Who can explain that? Um, I see this having two different meanings. One being and being um, who can take a reason and increase their height. And uh, another being and being who, by taking thought, can increase their riches. Okay. So... By one cubit, who can who can add unto a statue? That's the, the first one was right. What it's saying is, by you stressing on the issue, are you gonna change the issue by stressing on it and meditating on it day and night? No, it's still gonna be there. It's gonna be there. So pray and go to sleep. <laughs> not telling you to be a bum. Not saying that. After you went and searched for a job all day. Right. <laughs> Read the verse, Christian. 28, 28. And why take ye thought for raiment? Uh -huh. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. Three. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith, therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles see. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. The Most High God knows your needs. He knows. He knows you need gas to drive your car. He knows you need food to feed your belly. He knows you need shoes to cover your feet. He knows these things. He made, he made it all. He created everything. All right, read. Verse 33. 
But seek ye first the kingdom of God uh -huh. and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Uh -huh. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. All right, so don't stress things. Let the most high God work it out. You do your part, he'll do his part. All right, from there, let's go to Proverbs 37, I mean Psalms 37 and 25. Psalms 37 and 25. This is the last one dealing with finances. <laughs> this is the book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse 25. Uh -huh. I have been young and now am old. Uh -huh. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. So he says, I've been young and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. So the Most High God is going to provide. He's saying this is tried and true. Many different examples of our forefathers being in uh, famine situations, and the Most High take care of them. Who can who can give me one example of us being in a famine? The Most High take care of us. When one of the prophets had to go to the uh, lady, and the lady gave him uh, bread and oil. Right, you got bread and oil. The Lord fed one of the prophets with the ravens. Right, the ravens came for Elijah. What else? The, the most known. They was in Egypt. With there Joseph. you go. When we was in Egypt, the most I had set Joseph up to be over the food supply. That's a, and, and that's another scripture. When you walk in righteousness, the most I will set you up. Who would have thought them selling Joseph as a, as a young child would come back to benefit them? Why? Because the most High God does everything for the good of them that love God. There's nothing you can do that's wrong when you're walking in the commandments. Now, obviously, that situation was a little different. The Most High had a bigger plan than what they had. But they were going to miss the sin for what they did. But the Most High looked out. <laughs> Set them up. Next one. Next one. Next issue our people deal with. We have uh, fear that we are going to be single our whole life. All right? I know we have a lot of single brothers and single sisters. And you may want a spouse. Let's see what God says about that. Let's go to Tobit 4 and 17. Tobit chapter 4 and verse 17. This is the book of Tobit in the Apocrypha chapter 4, verse 17. Pour out thy bread on the bird. That ain't what I want. That ain't what I want. That I want more. I want the one where uh, he was appointed from here for you. Appointed for me. Ah, I know what you're talking about. It's probably eight. Uh, six. Six, oh, six, seventeen. Six. I'm sorry. Gotcha. I'm sorry. Tobit six and seventeen. Yeah. Tobit chapter six verse seventeen. Uh huh. And the devil shall smell it and flee away and never come again any more. Uh huh. But when thou shalt come to her, rise up both of you and pray to God, which is merciful, uh -huh. who will have pity on you and save you. Fear not, for she is appointed unto thee from the beginning. For what? From the beginning. Read the for she. For she is appointed she unto is thee. She is appointed unto thee from when? From the beginning. Uh huh. And thou shalt preserve her, and she shall go with thee. Mm -hmm. Moreover, I suppose that she shall bear thee children. Now when Tobias had heard these things, he loved her, and his heart was effectually joined to her. So, understand, your spouse, the Most High, has an individual. It says that this sister was appointed unto him from the beginning. Now who can tell me anything about um, his wife, Tobias' actual, Tobias' wife? How many husbands did she go through? Seven. Seven. Letting you know that guess what? Yeah, your first year, your first year in the truth and you didn't find a husband. Okay, that's fine. That's fine, sister. Keep living life and keeping the commandments. Same thing for brothers. Alright, same thing for brothers. Go to Sirach 26 and 20 uh, Sirach 26 and 3. Sirach chapter 26 and 3. Going into that fear. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 26, verse 3. Now, some people might be scared. You know, I, I'm scared I'm going to get a wicked spouse or a wicked man or a wicked woman. Let's see how you eliminate that fear, as always, by keeping the commandments. See what the Bible says. A good wife uh -huh. is a good portion. Read. Which shall, which shall be given in the portion of them 
that fear the Lord. So you you want to get a good wife, brother? You got to be a righteous individual. That's simple. That's how you eliminate fear. That's why it says perfect love casteth out fear. If you know you righteous, meaning guess what? You went through the proven process the right way. You checked on the system the right way. You make sure she was built up the right way. What what fear is there? Why are you why are you worried about if she with you? But guess what? You marry her two weeks after being in the truth, and y'all get married. Yeah, you gonna have some fear. You gonna have some doubt because you don't know what the hell you just got into. All right, brother just got put out the body today. Said uh, married. He had sex with the sister two weeks. After, after coming into the truth, and now they hate each other. Mm -hmm. And now he don't want to take her to be, be his wife. I'm telling y'all, it's a million horror stories out there from doing it the wrong way. Follow the scriptures and you'll be fine. Sirach 26 and verse 23. Verse 23. A wicked woman. A what? A wicked woman. Read. Is given as a portion to a wicked man. So, it says a wicked woman is given in portion to a wicked man. So, if a brother lay down with a sister after two weeks, is that, a, is that a righteous man or a wicked man? It's a wicked man. So guess what he gonna get? A wicked woman. A wicked woman. That's why it used to be so funny. Always in college, brothers, after they lay down with a sister like the first two nights, they'd be like, I wonder if she, if she, if she supposed to be with me or not. <laughs> I'm like, bro, probably not. That <laughs> probably ain't the one for you. If she did that with you, what you think she did with everybody else? It's just common sense. It's common sense. Hey, but officer, it probably is the one for him. Yeah. No, it, it is, it, matter of fact. It, it, it is. Because he did the same thing. Exactly. Ah, so how should we be, how should we be when we're dealing with fear? Let's go to Psalms 23 and verse 4. Alright, Psalms chapter 23 and verse 4. How should we be when dealing with this fear? In different situations arise. How should we take it? This is the book of Psalms, chapter 23 and verse 4. Uh -huh. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Read. I will fear no evil. I will what? Fear no evil. Uh -huh. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So it says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. What is the shadow of valley of death? The shadow of death. What is that? Captivity. Captivity. How can you prove it? Um, Psalms um, 107 and 10. Good. Let's get that. Psalms chapter 107, verse 9 and 10. All right. This is Christianity. One of the top. Top, I say top 20 scriptures. This is the top 20. I won't say top 10 because, you know, you got a lot of love scriptures in there. Mm -hmm. uh, Psalms uh, chapter 107 verse 9. Uh -huh. For he satisfieth the, lo the longing soul and filleth the hungry. I'm, I'm sorry. Let me start at 10. Uh, verse 10. Such as sit in darkness uh -huh. and in the shadow of death. In the shadow of death. Being bound in affliction. And iron. Being bound in affliction and iron. Being bound in affliction and iron. Going into captivity. Going into captivity. That's what the shadow of death is. So while we're in the midst of America, we should fear no evil. That's what the scripture is letting us know. We're not worried about what's going on here in America. We're not worried that all the food is defiled. We're not worried what's going on. Um, with the well, with, uh, with the Black Lives Matter, yes. yeah. Go ahead. Hey, brothers, on a serious note, a hey, um, in regards to our uh, our meats, you know, you know these GMOs and they getting injected with all these hormones. Is that lawful to eat? Or can we eat that? I want to hear some responses. Can we eat that? Um, let me hear you. You pretty. Let me hear you, brother. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because they still sell it. They still serve it. They sell pork too. Can you eat it? No, you can't eat pork. No, that's not a good reason. No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me hear somebody else. Yes, brother. There you go, brother. I like that. I like that. Because you got a lot of brothers preaching a doctrine off of um, that you can't eat these foods because the way you know they got the way they're being at mass produced. 
Just like uh, officer just brought out, I just wanted to make sure, make sure that doc should win in. I know we got a lot of new people, just want to make sure. All right, from there, let's go to uh, Psalms 91. Going into that shadow of death. Because here in America, especially with Trump being president, a lot of stuff been in the pop All right, so we got to make sure we're not rolling in that spirit of fear. We got to make sure we're not rolling in that spirit of fear. Uh, Start at verse 1. Psalms chapter 91, verse 1. Uh -huh. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Where's the secret place of the Most High? Uh, huh? The Bible. Right. Scripture. Uh, anybody else? All right, let's go to Psalms 119 and 114. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 114. Uh -huh. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. Uh -huh. I hope in thy word. So thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. So in these scriptures is the hiding place. Because guess what? The Israelites are the only people covering themselves in these scriptures. When we go out and teach, when we go to the streets, our people don't trust in this Bible. And if they know the scriptures, they know the scriptures that Christianity taught them. They're not actually reading and getting the understanding of the scriptures. Alright? So we the only people that's hoping and staying in the secret place. Let's go back to Psalms 91. Psalms 91 verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Read. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. In him what? <coughs> will I trust. So, this individual, does he have fear? No, right? Because what did we say uh, fear was? Everybody yelling out. Hands, hands. Like a trust, betrayal. There you go. The betraying of the secures. That reason offereth. All right. Read that again. Verse 2. Verse 2. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. Uh -huh. My God, in him will I trust. Read. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler uh -huh. and from the noisome pestilence. What is the snare of the fowler and the noisome pestilence? What is that? The uh, nuclear thermal missile. There you go. That is the destruction that's coming here. Read. He shall cover thee with his feathers, uh -huh. and under his wings shalt thou trust. Uh -huh. His truth shall be thy, thy. I'm sorry. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. All right. His shield and buckler. But just to show you, do the white man trust in the in the Bible? All these Christian billionaires. What are they building underneath their big houses? What are they building? Underground bunkers. Underground bunkers. Why? Because they don't really trust in this Bible. They say, oh, well, hey, they don't know the Bible. But they go to church all day and then they come back home and they invest some more billions into their underground bunkers. Showing you, this ain't for them. Because that underground bunker ain't going to do nothing when the most I say he's going to set, he going to break the, uh, the islands removed out of their place. Mm -hmm. So if that's happening, that bunker ain't gonna that bunker ain't gonna do nothing. Alright? Keep reading off. Verse six. Oh, I'm sorry. Verse five. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, uh -huh. nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Read. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Read. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Uh -huh. A thousand shall fall at thy side. And ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Going back into what we read in Matthew 24. That's why it says, want to be in the field and want to be taken up. Seeing ten thousand fall on this side and a thousand fall on that side. Now, what arrow can do that? Because it said an arrow by night. What bow and arrow can kill ten thousand people? I miss That's a bow and arrow? Uh, a nuclear bomb. That, a nuclear bomb is a bow and arrow? I think the Cherokee had that. Uh, <laughs> <got it too. laughs> what arrow can do that? No arrow. There you go. That's what I was looking for. Okay. It wasn't a trick question. <laughs> I wanted to hit no one. None. So this, what is this letting you know? That's what it's referring to. It's referring to that. Alright? That's what it's referring to. 
Showing you again that these scriptures are prophecy. No other book has prophecy in it like this Bible. Alright, keep reading. Verse 7. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Mm -hmm. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, uh -huh. because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. Read. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Uh -huh. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy way. Revelation 2 and 10. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. This is the book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 10. Uh -huh. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. It says, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Read. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Uh -huh. That ye may be tried, uh -huh. and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Uh -huh. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So, that's why we're not walking with the spirit of the fear. Guess what? The same thing happened to the disciples. Same thing happened all throughout, uh, all throughout time. I forgot which uh, comedian made that joke, but any, any black leader that's about something, they don't been cast into prison. All right? That's how I know Officer Matthias is a prophet. Because when we go into Atlanta, they threw my brother in jail. I say, that, that was a sign. The brother's a prophet. All right, I'm just waiting on my time. That's when you really get that stamp. You know, so it's going to happen, brothers. Don't, don't be worried. Don't be scared. I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.